if there's one thing we love about the Flames, it is a good, solid underdog story. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmasto, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Today, we are going to be talking about Jacob Pelletier and the unfortunate, the series of unfortunate events that have prevented him from playing a true full uh, NHL season. And I'm looking forward to discussing this with you because Jacob Pelletier is like one of my favorite players, um, simply because he is so easy to root for. And we're going to talk about that. Um as well as what to expect in his second attempt at making the roster out of camp this summer, as well as finding that production and leveling those expectations. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts, as well as YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. Jacob Pelletier is someone that I think the entire Flames fan base holds like near and dear to our hearts. He is so fun. He is high energy and he just brings the vibes. It's been talked about all the time. Uh, Even when he has played with the Wranglers, it's talked about how he just, you know, energizes everyone, fires everyone up in in a really good and helpful, like healthy, positive way. Um, And how he has helped make other people feel welcome. Uh, him and Huberto um, are obviously both from Quebec and um, have like that father son relationship. We've, we saw it all over Instagram back in 2022, 2023 um, that final season of Daryl Sutter. And I'm sure that they both leaned on each other because of that situation as well. But let's talk about the unfortunate injury that got in the way of Pelletier's true rookie season. Um, he It was the last game of the preseason against the Seattle Kraken, and he ended up getting, like, a hit, um, crunched. I like crunched better. Crunched against the boards. Um and obviously left the game and he needed shoulder surgery and it was a real bummer because the expectation going into last like this time last year was oh my god Pelletier is finally going to be on the NHL roster this is so great like we're finally going to get to see him pop this is his time um he's finally going to make the jump which was awesome but him like him and Coronado were supposed to be like the Zarian Pospisil of last season, um, which didn't end up happening. But he ended up getting the shoulder surgery and was actually out uh, rehabbing with Kevin Rooney, who ended up getting a, a similar shoulder injury and needing surgery like at a practice. The fir- I think it was like the first practice of this the true season. Um, so Pelletier missed from, I guess, September to February. And obviously, coming back, you you have dust. Um, you got to shake that off. You got to get the rust off. You got to, you know, find your groove again. And unfortunately, he had only three points in through 13 games with the Flames. Um, he didn't look... I don't think confident is the right word, but like secure with himself. He wasn't playing with that, um, I guess, that confidence that you need. And, you know, 
believing that you can do it and actually like follow through and that's to be expected you know you missed the entire season you're worried about um re-injuring your shoulder which you did and against the new york rangers thank you jacob truba for absolutely nothing um and that that was tough but it ended up being fine and then get sent down to finish the season with the wranglers and play in the postseason with them he had 12 points in 18 games that's pretty solid uh you know obviously it's a different skill level you're playing at and the ahl is a developmental league you have like (laughs) you are still learning and i don't necessarily think it's a bad thing that he struggled with the flames and then went to have success in the ahl like to me that doesn't signify oh my god he's just gonna be an ahl player for his whole career no he's coming back from a serious injury with limited experience um you know it's not like he had momentum to build off of like he was still finding his groove and you know he was able to find it with the wranglers and that's great and i think it's just it's so tough for me to sit here and like truly analyze his season and be like the season was a bust. It was 13 games. Like you aren't getting a true sample. If it was like 40 or 50 games, then yeah, I would be able to like give you more information, but he had one goal and two assists in 13 games with the flames. That's not good, but there were also times when Matthew Kachuk would go 18, 19 games without a goal. Can't, can't can't write him off as a bus just because that happens. Like everyone is different. And I think that this season will be a big step for him. I think playing with a coach that allows you to make mistakes and does not punish you for them, uh, helps you and guides you through like how to maybe go about that if it happens again so you don't end up making that same mistake like there's plenty of room to learn regardless of if you're a rookie or if you are a long-term NHL player you everyone gets that same treatment and that's how it should be but coming up next we are going to talk about where he might play uh in this Flames lineup that's going to look a whole heck of a lot different than what we saw last season. But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after this. I love sports and you love sports and we never want them to stop. But the playoffs have wound down and we get fewer and fewer games uh, regardless of the sport. And the sports just aren't sporting like, like we want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep sport keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I am in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. Something for There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head on over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thanks, everyone, for making Locked on Flames part of your day. Uh, Make sure you're subscribed wherever you're getting your podcasts and on YouTube. But we are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. I am very much looking forward to the start of the Flames season. I think with this new roster comes a whole new chapter of Flames hockey. And it's going to be so fun to watch. It might not be you know, that top level, top tier hockey that you want to see, but these are the stepping stones to get there. And if there's a player that knows about taking steps to get to the ultimate goal, that would be Jacob Pelletier. Um, He 
is <laughs> someone that has really like constantly persisted like if there's like resilience a resilience award i would give that to him um as well as a few other players like kind of split the, the trophy up but let's talk about these predictions for this upcoming season I'm not talking about standings or point projections or any of that but the line projections i think this is like one of the more fascinating parts of the summer because you're trying to like truly configure okay, who's going to make, who's actually going to make the lineup, who's, you know, kind of a fringe NHL player, and what kind of delusion can we create? But no, I think Flames fans do a, pre a pretty decent job creating these, and it's not anything where it's like, what do you mean um, Brett Ritchie or Nick Ritchie's playing on that top line? Like, there's there's none of that. So they have Pelletier, um, projected to start on the fourth line which I think is it's a fair place to start you can't just <laughs> throw certain players to the wolves and like expect them to do well with like those top line minutes immediately out of the gate that's something that players I feel like a player like Pelletier needs to build up to if if that's where they want to play him I think that he does have the versatility to play really like that bottom six right now. Um, him and Ke him, Kevin Rooney and uh, Dryden Hunt played on the fourth line together last season for a bit. And, you know, they looked pretty good. It's unfortunate that they didn't get more of an opportunity to play together, but, Maybe this season things look a little different. Who knows? Uh, but I do feel like you can't just throw him to the wolves. He has had to climb, to claw his way to the NHL roster. And you want him to have a successful first season. But that also doesn't mean just like stapling him to the fourth line because that's that's what you see fit. I think that there is an opportunity for him to play in the lineup or higher up in the lineup, rather. I think that that's, you know, there's hope for all of that in all of your players, but I do see the potential of this happening. Um, you know, he has that chemistry with Huberto and they're going to be looking <laughs> to get him going. And that's why they brought in Anthony Mantha. So you have a full French connection line right there. And that that could be really good. That could be really good. Um, some good hockey to watch. So it's, there's a lot of combinations where I could see him, you know, playing here, playing there. Uh, you aren't necessarily going to get like, quote unquote, what you need the most. Um, out of every draft pick, you know, you can draft, I, I don't like a guy's projected to be a top six winger and he ends up not being that like that, that happens. And it's, it's not just your organization that drafts like that, but I don't necessarily think that you can write him off for his performances this far. I think it's a matter of, again, getting comfortable, building off of that momentum, and having a coach that just, like, actually believes in you and won't punish you for turning the puck over. We saw that. I saw that with my own two eyes in Los Angeles, but I digress. I like the speed that he brings to the game. I like the finesse he brings. I think that once you get that confidence under his belt, you're going to have a player that really knows what he's doing. And, you know, he's 23 years old. He hasn't played a full NHL season yet. There's a lot of circumstances and I don't want reasoning behind that. And I just, I do think that you can't, <laughs> like, I can't, I can't confidently say, oh, he's going to be like a top six winger. 
I don't know. Uh, based on what I've seen, I would say bottom six right now. But that's, again, he has the opportunity to grow and probably play more of the middle six positions, I would say. I think the Flames are a, a team that finds ways to get creative. Um, I mean, I, I don't think you can just write this off and be like, well, he's going to be a career fourth liner or he's going to be a fringe NHL, AHL player. He's always going to be on two-way contract. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you, you have to keep like your expectations at bay. And I personally, I hope that he finds success higher up in the lineup. But if, you know, Martin Pospisil or Matt Coronado are playing solid hockey with their line mates in those higher role or higher minute roles, you don't need to take that away just because you want to try something. Could you? Yeah, of course. Like to me, There isn't, like a few years ago when I was covering the team and the fourth line was Lucic, Trevor Lewis, and whatever Richie brother they had signed. Um, They, like to me, that is a line that you could could have easily replaced with any of the kids in the AHL. There isn't a line where I like, I look at that and I'm like, why is this player in the lineup over X, Y, Z? So I can't say like, oh, we'll just like move them around. Of course, put put your lines in a blender. We have seen many combinations (laughs) of things like that happening. So it's not unexpected. I do like though that we're having, we have um, less, what the heck is this guy doing on my team players and free agent signings because then you're not taking spots away from the kids that deserve it. And obviously, like, no one is saying veterans are bad. No one is saying that. But at some point, you have to realize that uh, sometimes they do more harm than good when they're just out there skating and doing cardio for six minutes a night. Give a young kid the opportunity, slot in, get that experience under his belt and get get confident. But coming up next, we're going to wrap up the show with what I think could be some reasonable goals or expectations for Jacob Pelletier ahead of this season. But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break here and we'll be right back after this. We are driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work, use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster and all in one place. You uh, leverage over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day. Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about you heard about it on heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Locked on Flames. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. With like, this time last year, I remember Nick and I were sitting down 
talking on the show about how the Flames were going to make up for the 30 goals to fully took with him. You know, that's that's a lot. That's a solid chunk of, of goals in Flames offense right there. So you had to kind of think like, all right, these guys are getting sprinkled in here. It's their first season. So maybe they put up like 10 goals. Is that realistic? Oh, well, you know, Blake Coleman's been in the league for a while and we've seen an uptick in predict, uh, production from him. So maybe he scores 15 or 18 goals. No one had Sharon Govich scoring the 30 goals. No one had Kadri scoring 29 goals. Like no, no one had that in the cards. <laughs> the responsibility <laughs> was uh, allocated to the rookies because that's what, that's what you you're hoping for. You're hoping that these kids pop in the NHL and you know, the responsibility I think that we placed on majorly on were of course, Coronado and Pelletier, both of them, you know, did what they could. Um, I think Coronado, again, just needs another year. And, you know, you, you start to find your footing You're like a baby giraffe, right? Um, you have to spread the wealth a little bit. I think a 10 to like 15 goal season from Pelletier is reasonable. An 82 game season. That's more than reasonable, I would say. Coming in and making a difference is important, but you also need to be playing a game that is sustainable and consistent. It doesn't need to be flashy. It doesn't need to be, you know, a kachuk between the legs sort of deal. You find the back of the net, you find the back of the net. And that's what the flames are going to need there. <laughs> you know, obviously you're hoping for a higher draft pick this se- this next season, but you, you still want to score. You, you're never going to convince these guys to like throw in the towel, but I think Pelletier is someone that's going to come in and he is going to grind his way to the top. He is, he's small. He's five, nine ish on a good day. Right. Um, it, it reminds me a lot of Johnny Gaudreau in the sense of, you know, he's undersized. He has, you know, there's different expectations production wise, but like, I think it takes like a certain type of player to be able to like persevere with that positive attitude. Um, and that's, you know, it's a good thing to have because if, you know, say you, you start stinking, you're not doing too hot. You don't want to be a negative Nelly that just like radiates sadness and frustration because that that will eventually catch on to other people in the room. But I think with his rookies, like his true rookie season, his true first year full first year in the NHL, you are probably going to see a middle six to bottom six player. Like, I I hope I'm wrong. I hope he plays above that and whatnot. But there's players on the team that get paid a heck of a lot more to do what you might be asking or what you might be hoping for. So, uh, you don't need to, you know, call 911 because, you know, he has a bat, a slow start to the season. Same thing. We're going to talk about it with Dustin Wolf when that contract extension happens. Because I don't think people are ready for that conversation. (laughs) And, With, like, this next group of young players coming in, I think people have been realistically, uh, you know, fine with their expectations. However, Dustin Wolf is also, like, very small. He's also 5'9", especially for a goaltender. Um, 
there were some games last season where, you know, he would let in some not so great goals and people would be saying, I don't think he's fit to be an NHL, an NHL goaltender because he's so small. And then he would like go on and like stop like 86 billion shots. And they'd be like, this kid's going to be a stud. He's going to be fantastic. This guy is the goalie to be. And it's like, well, like welcome to being a sports fan, but also like, you can't just write someone off because of a few performances. Because if that's the case, you are never going to enjoy the sport that you're watching and putting all your time into. How many times have, you know, top tier players, like I think of like growing up a Bruins fan, I think of Tuka Rask and how his Octobers were horrible. But he still finished his career being and still is the most winningest goaltender in franchise history. He's not a bust. There's a lot of things that factor into every player's performance, the legacy. But let's start with the baby steps of making that jump to the NHL. I really hope to see a lot of Pelletier in the NHL this season. But I really want things to, you know, I have faith in Ryan Huska based on how he incorporated uh, the young guys this past season. I think that, like, if there's one person I trust to do this, it's Huska. I think it's um, a situation where he has the opportunity to really help all of these players grow. Again, it doesn't matter if you are a spring chicken coming into the league, ninth overall, or if you are a player like Kadri anchoring a center or anchoring a line with two rookies. Like there's so much room for everyone and not everyone. Like you everyone is coachable and should remain coachable. And I have high hopes for this season for Pelletier. I don't think it's going to be anything super flashy or record-breaking, but I, I do hope he plays well, and I think he will. It's just a matter of getting to that point. But that will do it for me today on Lockdown Flames. Thank you so much for making the show part of your day. I hope you all have a great, great evening or day whenever you're listening to this. And you stay safe, you stay warm, you stay cool, you stay dry, you stay hydrated, you stay moisturized, and I will see you all tomorrow. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week. Your Calgary Flames every day.